Is that ice bath trend worth discomfort? Today, I'm diving into the science behind cold water immersion to separate fat from fad. You'll learn what research exactly shows about recovery benefits, stress reduction, and who should avoid cold plunges complete. I'll even cover a surprising alternative that most people haven't thought about or done yet. So if you're curious but hesitant to try, by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to make the right choice for your specific situation. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified in nephrology and obesity medicine. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to kidney health, longevity, and general health and wellness. Now, this cold plunge trend has exploded. Everyone from athletes to celebrities promoting its benefits, and for good reason. Research supports many of these claims for healthy individuals. So let's take a look. In this video, we're going to cover the proven benefits backed by science, how to maximize results safely, who should approach cold water immersion with caution, a surprising alternative, and evidence-based options for those who should or can't have cold exposure. So let me know in the comments if you've tried cold immersion therapy before. What was your experience like? What did you feel? All right, let's dive into the basics, the physiological response. When your body meets cold water, the ideal temperature for cold water immersion is 10 to 15 degrees Celsius or 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. When that happens, it triggers several key responses. The first one is the cold shock response. Now, this is immediate reaction, including involuntary gasping, hyperventilation, and an elevated heart rate. Number two is vasoconstriction, blood vessels narrow, redirecting blood flow from the extremities over onto our vital organs. And number three is the hormonal cascade, the significant increase in stress hormones and endorphins that occurs with cold water exposure. Now, these responses, they create both the challenges and the benefits of cold exposure. Understanding them is essential in practicing safely and maximizing the results. Let's start with the benefits. What does the research show? Recovery benefits have the strongest evidence. Research conclusively demonstrates cold water immersion improves post-exercise recovery. There's a reduction in muscle soreness. Meta-analysis shows significant decrease in DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness 24 hours post-exercise. There's enhanced perceived recovery. In other words, athletes report feeling fresher with measurable improvements. There's decreased inflammatory markers lower creatinine kinase levels, which indicate reduced muscle damage. There's also faster power restoration. In other words, better, faster recovery of strength and explosive power. Now, what's the optimal protocol based on research? Well, it's building up to 10 to 15 minutes at 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Very simple. 10 to 15 minutes at 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. For those of you who are like me, Go by Fahrenheit is 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's not as cool of a mnemonic as 10 to 15 minutes at 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. And you want to do this immediately post-exercise. Stress reduction benefits. Now, beyond the physical recovery, cold exposure shows impressive psychological effects. There's measurable stress reduction. A 2025 systematic review found significant reductions in stress 12 hours post-exposure. There's improved sleep quality and improved overall well-being. Hormonal benefits, so initial stress response is followed by rebound, relaxation, and endorphin release. Now, a very interesting area is metabolic and cognitive potential. Brown adipose tissue activation. So one of the things that's being looked at right now is the idea that cold exposure can activate brown adipose tissue and lead to more energy expenditure. There's also potentially positive impacts on insulin sensitivity and lipid profiles. In addition, people respond and report that they have enhanced alertness. They're more focused. There's a whole hormonal response that occurs that improves attention and cognitive clarity. And then there's the adaptation benefits. In other words, regularly doing cold water immersion leads to improved cold tolerance and better and better outcomes from circulatory improvements to all of the benefits that we're talking about. 
So for those of you guys who have tried cold exposure, did you notice any of these mood or cognitive benefits? Let me know in the comments below. All right, now let's talk about an alternative. And this is one that I practice myself. So if you're not ready for full body cold plunges or you're very busy like me, you can try face only ice water immersion. This offers many of the benefits with far fewer risk. And this is something I try to do every morning. So what's the science? Well, the science is, is that when you do a face plunge in ice water, you do trigger the mammalian dive reflex. So when your face contacts cold water, it causes immediate heart rate reduction and vagal nerve stimulation. You also activate the trigeminal nerve, sending alertness signals directly to the brain. So hence why I do it first thing in the morning. So what are the benefits versus full immersion? Well, you get stress reduction, you get mood enhancement, you get cognitive alertness, and you get that refreshed feeling. But what you miss, full hormonal cascade, the complete metabolic activation, the muscle recovery benefits. So this is sort of that halfway compromise that you can do, and it's a simple technique. You can fill a basin with ice water, once again, 10 to 15 degrees Celsius or 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Take a deep breath, hold it, put your face in for about 15 to 30 seconds, rest, and then repeat it again. So I tend to do it about two to three times, usually about three times. This approach is perfect for beginners and those with contraindications to full immersion or busy individuals like me looking for a quick way to wake up in the morning and have stress relief. Now, what about you guys? Do you want to try full only immersion? Have you already tried it? And if so, what did you experience? Safety. We have to talk about safety considerations to maximize the benefits and minimize the risk. When it comes to cold shock management, remember the peak danger is in the first 30 seconds. So enter gradually and focus on controlled breathing. For example, four seconds in, hold your breath, six seconds controlled, exhale. And act is progressive sort of acclimatization, meaning that you're little by little getting used to it. First few times, maybe you're doing it for 30 seconds, then a minute and so forth. And for people who have certain conditions who should really consider caution with this is if you have any heart disease, any history of stroke, any uncontrolled high blood pressure, any arrhythmias, all of those should not do it. People who have any respiratory disorders, asthma, COPD, you definitely don't want to do it. Kidney disease, what the data shows is that for full-on cold water immersion, research shows that there's an increased risk of acute kidney injury with cold exposure because of the vasoconstriction. And of course, people who are older, definitely women who are pregnant and people who are just not used to cold. And of course, if they have any autoimmune conditions like Raynaud's or anything like that, you definitely don't want to do this. And if you're uncertain, if you should or shouldn't, talk to your doctor. Now, there are certain safety protocols for those who are ready to take the cold plunge. First, start with brief exposures, 30 to 60 seconds, and then gradually increase. Begin with moderately cold water, 18 to 20 degrees Celsius before progressing to colder water. You can try, instead of going for that 10 to 15 minutes, you can try 60 seconds to two minute exposures, little by little, so that you can reduce your cold shock response. Data shows that six two minute exposures over three days can reduce cold shock response by 50%. Safety setup, this is really important, especially when you're in the beginning. Please don't do it alone. Use a controlled environment and have warm, dry clothes ready to go. And proper technique, I know this sounds silly, but look, enter slowly, start with the feet, start with the hands, right? Go slowly so your body adjusts. Focus on slow, controlled breathing. Once again, four count inhale, six count exhale, slow it down. Optimal protocol, as I mentioned before, the 10 to 15 rule, 10 to 15 minutes at 10 to 15 degrees Celsius once you're fully acclimated to it. In the beginning, you're going to go much less than that. And the best time to do it is immediately post-exercise. Now, if you've done it already and you're an athlete, 
what safety measures are you doing? And if you're really used to it, how long did it take you to get used to it? And if you're somebody out there listening to this and saying, look, I, I can't stand the cold. There's no way I'm going to be able to do it. Well, there are evidence-based alternatives. The next video we do is going to be on sauna or heat therapy. So passive heat therapy, which is you can do hot water immersion, sitting in a hot bath around 105 degrees, has impressive cardiovascular benefits. There's a study that was done for eight weeks, showed that heat therapy increased flow media dilation by 94% and reduce blood pressure. And the improvements were comparable to exercise training. There's also, if you, if you can't handle that temperature, there's warm water immersion, 36 to 38 degrees. In other words, about 97 to 100 degrees. Sit in there for 20 to 30 minutes. There are benefits for sleep, for relaxation, for hemodynamic changes. So in other words, sitting in a sauna or going in a hot tub. And then there's other things like compression or active recovery, yoga, stretches, and so forth that you can do. But the key takeaways that we're talking about today on cold water immersion are as follows. That one, this is not simply a fad that research supports real benefits when practiced correctly. So in other words, there are evidence-based benefits, significant improvements in recovery, in stress reduction, and potentially metabolism. Number two, there are multiple approaches. You can do full immersion, or you can do what I do, which is only face-only techniques, only because of the fact that I'm so busy and I love how it makes me feel in the morning. Number three, safety matters. Proper protocols that I mentioned will maximize your benefits and minimize the risks. But number four is know your body. Listen, some groups should use caution and some groups should avoid cold water immersion absolutely complete. And there are effective alternatives. Heat therapy can offer similar benefits and may be better for certain populations. The key here is to make evidence-based decisions tailored to your unique situation. And remember, with every single video we talk about this, as you're thinking about all sorts of these tools you can add to your life, just remember one of the most important tools you can do is practice kindness. If you practice kindness to others, it will help you to lower your stress and live longer. And you can practice kindness to yourself by choosing approaches that work best for your body and your circumstances. As always, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, that subscribe button, share this video, and I'd love to hear about your experiences with cold water immersion in the comments below. Until next time, practice kindness and take good care of yourself. Thank you.